fam. It's Tuesdays with Tawana. What is going on? So happy to be here on this Tuesday. I am Dr. Tad, your host and your curator for Tuesdays with Tawana, a space where we build community one episode at a time. We chop it up. We talk about Anything from A through Z, funny stuff, serious stuff, revolutionary stuff, life stuff, you name it, we talk about it. How do we talk about it? You insert your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, feelings in the comments, and I will then insert that into this narrative. So... Um, that's how we engage in Tuesdays with Tawana. It's not about me talking for a half an hour. I spend 30 minutes with you. It is about engaging all of you in a conversation, a dialogue, um, sharing, learning, growing, being, uh, understanding, overstanding, <laughs> supporting, um, and even agreeing to disagree. There are times when um, if I have a thought, opinion, and experience that you don't understand or don't agree with, we talk about it. So we exemplify what it is to love ourselves and to love others, even in the midst of challenges or disagreements or whatever you want to call it. So for today, um, it's so interesting because the, it's it's a struggle for me to uh, show up at every Tuesday, right? There, there are times when I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then energy, spirit, the universe is like, no, you will do it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so for today, um, hey, Tony, so good to see you. I love you so much. I hope that your weekend and your Mother's Day was absolutely as phenomenal as you are. Uh, I had an opportunity to preach um, on Mother's Day virtually uh, at uh, the church where uh, Reverend Carolyn Habersham, Mother Carolyn, preaches at First Presbyterian Church of L.A. And I must say, um, <laughs> Tony said, get somebody else to do it. <laughs> Oh, hey, Mother Carolyn. I didn't even know you were on. I was just about to talk about you, so your ears might have been buzzing a bit. Hey, what's up, Tammy? My beautiful niece doing big things for Black Beloveds in the podcast world. So grateful for you, my brilliant, beautiful niece. Um, so, yeah, I, I had an opportunity to to, to preach um, and to experiencing the preaching moment. Um at First Presbyterian of Los Angeles, and I haven't preached a, a Mother's Day in, in quite a long time. And it definitely, as m most or all sermons, take, you know, just some prayer and research and conversations. And, you know, especially since uh, I forgot which one of my beautiful beloved said to me, you know, to want to understand that your your mother has been gone for 30 years from from this life and you are still a mother so finding that you know that balance of grief still grieving the the loss the physical loss of my mom and celebrating the fact that I am a mother and not only am I a mother I am the mother of two phenomenal black beloveds, uh, Eric and Kaisha. Some of you know her as Darylin. I also call her Diva. Um, they are absolutely just beautiful souls. They are educators. They are funny. They are caring. They have been my caregiver for quite some time. So celebrate that. And it's okay to do, guess what? Both and. I was in a meeting earlier and one of my colleagues um, does uses that term a lot as well uh, because we're not either or, 
it's it's not you're either going to grieve your mom or you're going to celebrate being a mother. No, you can do both. Surprise. You can be angry at the way, um, you know, the relationship with your parental is not as as nurturing or, or positive or as loving and giving as you experience that part of mothering through others. You can be angry and still love the fact that someone else has come in and cared for you or the lessons learned from, you know, the challenges, the challenging relationship that you may or may not have had. So uh, let's see, Tony says, closing my office door and eating mama loves food while I engage. Can we just pause for a moment for a praise moment? Mama love could cook. Y'all don't understand. I want some, I'll make sure when I come back to New York, um, we have dinner together. Look who's on. I was just talking about you too, beloved. Uh, my Oh, my daughter said, great sermon. I got the form. Um, sorry. Um, I got the term mothering from you and have been mothering these students for 10 years. They are all up for adoption. <laughs> And my daughter is a great educator. She is nurturing and has all of the mothering energy and the mother mothering feminine divine spirit that is needed to bring these um, young people um, through this journey called life and across the, the finish line. Um, oh, thank you, Tammy. She said, yes, you are. Your children are phenomenal tony said they are as dope as they come my forever babies <laughs> yes daryl and you getting some love on the line yeah let's show some love to these educators tanisha is in education uh my daughter daryl is in education they're both on let's give them some love because we know that educators are just not honored in a way and in the space and and financially the way they should be um as they are caring and mothering these children uh for whatever for all different reasons not whatever reason for all different reasons whether it's not happening at home it's challenging to happen at home it can't happen at home you can't give what you don't have so if you weren't raised a certain way you may tend to either do the same things that you have experienced or you're very intentional about shifting the narrative and doing something different. Um, you know, some parents don't hug, they don't give their children uh, words of affirmation. And, and you may say, you know what, I don't want to be that way. That did not work well for me. And I had to work, put in the work. I had to go to therapy. I had to have mentors and mothers and aunties to teach me to love me so that I can love my children. Uh, Tanisha says, I deal with the grown folk. They are up for adoption too. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather deal with the young people. When I was uh, the youth and young adult pastor um, and then was moved into the executive pastor position, I was like, mm, I don't want to work with the adults. I want to work with the young people. That was my joy. Um, that's probably a different podcast. Let's move on. So, um, <laughs> so Mother's Day, um, I had an opportunity to preach and really talked about the different facets of, of Mother's Day and mothering. Um, I learned that term years ago through Mother Carolyn um, and through womanism about mothering and how it's more than a patriarchal, uh defined feminine approach or stance in life um it's more than you know cooking and cleaning and ironing and you know doing those womanly things that and for those who will be listening i am putting up the air quotes um that men may have defined um, so yeah, um, 
What's going on? Good to see you, Reverend Taylor. Yes, in the building on today. Yes, love the kidlets. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, it takes us out of this this binary space, these these binary norms that uh, patriarchy has placed on our shoulders because there was a time when we could not vote, we could not work, uh, we couldn't wear pants, we couldn't, you know, say certain things or do certain things. And it, it was very patriarchal and very demeaning and degrading and marginalizing and um, downright uh, just abusive when you know being abusive is when you have this power and control and over another and you by any means necessary make sh you make sure that they stay in the place that you want them to be in right so you know and then how that control is exhibited um is different forms of abuse so you have verbal abuse where you know where's my dinner? You know, I come home from work and where's my dinner and my voice might be raised or, you know, it might be a physical abuse, whatever it is. Um, it was quite demeaning, uh, for, for women, um, during up until recent years. And we're still fighting, uh, because once we have made strides and made things happen and made the changes that we needed to make, you know, we vote. And it's not because someone just gave us the opportunity to vote. We we fought for that. We fought, fought for the right for our bodies. We fought for the right for same gender loving couples and marriage. We fought for the right to be in the C-suite, if you will, or to have our own businesses, or we fought for the right to have uh, our choice to, to stay home and care for our, so it was our decision, our choice, our bodies, our minds, our souls, our spirits. And now the same patriarchal white group is now trying to bring us back into the 50s or even prior to the 50s and trying to take away all of our of our rights. And yeah, we are fighting, but still we rise. And how do we rise? We do this together in community because even in the the fact that we had to fight for our womanist prowess and our stance in this world, we still had to deal with colorism. Because if you look at the history of feminism, it was primarily for white women. Black women were not included. Do the research, do, do the studies, listen to the stories, facts. We were not included in this right. We were still, uh, second class or less than it was only for white women and then black feminism came along which then tapped into the tenets of white feminism and applied it to our black beloveds our black prowess our black into intellect our black divinity our black community but there was still something a bit something missing i mean you have wonderful black feminists like you know bell hooks or um um i my brain brain just went blank you have amazing black feminists who still continue to fight the good fight and then you have womanism that may have been created after feminism, but it, it kind of gave black feminism um, something to tap into other than whiteness. It, it gave black feminism an opportunity to say, um, you know, I am tapping into this womanist prowess of getting my power, my strength, my independence, my liberation from black voices, from black experience, from black artists, from black um, scholars, from black mamas, from black uh, communities. I am now tapping into that to get 
my information, to get my strength, to garner my strength, to then build community without having to seek white people to give me permission to be the black beloved that I am, the black woman that I am, the black femme or black non-gender conforming or black queer, whoever you are and however you show up in this world, you are divine, you are a human being, and you are a black beloved. So we, we, now are fighting and 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 white women are still on you know this in this place where they're voting for number 45 and they're you know still trying to block our voices and our agency and you know so we have to build community using the power that we have and it's it's power that we have and i think it's alice walker who said a quote similar to you know some of us don't use our power because we don't even know that we have it or we know we don't know that we have it so we don't use it and we have this amazing power that can bring us together and you know what other people will then follow that's how it's been, you know, with, with our culture, with the arts, with our academics. Everyone follows the leader, which is the black woman and the black beloveds. Full stop. Tanisha said, tapping into the intellect of those who don't have the complexion for the protection. you don't have what we have so you try to take that away white supremacist white power white culture well it's not even really white culture because and and this is oftentimes when i talk about white people it's because i have experienced over two thousand white people who who have intimately shared that they do not have a culture that they have their own infighting because they are um they have this in individualistic thought and view and ideology so th th this is coming from white people this is not just coming from me and my own brilliance it is coming from the experience of white people who are struggling with their whiteness because of what they well some are struggling some are just denying it like politicians who are trying to erase history and say that things didn't happen and we black beloveds weren't enslaved and so on and so forth because of their own guilt and shame because of their own um uh because of their own um i want to say like they don't really have a soul like <laughs> They don't have a soul that then speaks to the heart, that then speaks to the mind that causes them to act and behave differently in a loving and communal way. It's missing. It's missing. Um, what culture are they tapping into? We came from a beautiful culture that was full of of beautiful divine prowess and dancing and eating together and family and extended family and music and song and language and all of that we have that to tap into um and and what are they tapping into and 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 oftentimes we find that they are fearful of us because you have treated us so horribly that you think that if you give us any inkling of power and control, we come in. We don't got time for y'all. <laughs> we, we trying to get our beloveds to live and not die at the hands of systemic ills. We trying to dismantle these systemic ills. Now you either get on or you'll be dismantled like the systemic ills we are dismantling. So you have a choice and that's not my problem. It's not my problem, white supremacists. It's not my problem racist it's not my issue my issue my concern my responsibility is to bring our black beloveds together so that we know that we have the power and we know what we can tap into as a community we know that we can tap into our creative prowess to give us freedom and liberation whether it is creating art like uh visual art um if if it's 
through our dress and, and creating attire, whether it's through our hair, whether it's through our writings and writing books, whether it is creating uh, advances in the medical field. I mean, the list goes on and on and on when we talk about our black beloveds. Tanisha said, no, they're culture vultures. Sorry, but they are. I'm gonna take out the sorry. No, they are culture vultures. They can't help it. Their history is built on theft. So don't get mad at me and take away my rights to my body and my choice to, to work the, you know, in, in community or to do what I want with my body and my hair and what books I want to write, what books I want to read, because you are lacking in this wherewithal of community and both and, and uh, there's more than one way. It's not just one way to be right or even right or wrong. Everything is so siloed. Everything is so either or. Everything is I get mine, you get yours. And, you know, I'm living off of the inheritance of my four parents and then my four parents got their money off the backs of black people and I don't want them coming for me so I'm gonna keep taking and taking and taking and blocking and blocking and blocking but yet we are still here yet we are still building community yet we are still alive yet we are still creatives yes we are still divine yes we are still coming together to make the changes the necessary changes that we need so we can get our black beloveds out of prison we can get our black beloveds jobs we can uh, create spaces for our black beloveds to live in healthy and vibrant communities where they're not living in food deserts and living in spaces that have lack so then you wonder why there's violence because you set it up you put the drugs in our communities you put the guns in our communities you do all of that and take away the jobs and take away the educational opportunities and what the hell do you expect the result that the white people intended to happen for us to destroy ourselves and you can say see what they did just like the marine that killed our beloved the whatever his name is is supporting the marine if that is not blatant racism and what the hell is this country going to do about it nothing it is going to take us to make sure that we get them out of office that we re regain the control and the power that we've always had but have not um, been able to exercise on a national level because we are can't seem to come together as community. Whether it's struggle, it's it's colorism. Whether it is um, economic challenges. Whether it is. Um, well, I, you know, I went to this school and you didn't go to this school and I'm better than you. We got to stop conforming to white ideology and continue to live out our black thought and live out our black divine prowess so that we can be the change that we want to see. Black beloveds, and when I say black beloveds, I mean it. I mean it. I'm going to end with this. We... Um, we were talking about language and language justice, and that is huge. Language justice is huge, especially for us as black people, because sometimes we are kept so far in the dark and, and education is taken away, we don't really have the language to say what it is that we want to say um, to address the Ill ills of society, right? So um, the, the statement, there was a statement that included um, black queer folk. And my beloved asked me, uh, how do you feel about that? Being a cisgendered, heteronormative black woman? And I thought about it because my initial thought was, well, why not say woman? And then I had to check myself. And I said, if I truly believe that we are inextricably bound, my humanity is caught up in, in your humanity, 
I really shouldn't give a fuck what it says. Because you are me and I am you. So if you want to say black queer, that is a part of me. If you want to say black non-binary, that is a part of me. If you want to say black woman, that is a part of me. Because we are community. We share in experiences. We love one another with unconditional positive regard. So let me not fall into the white supremacist trope of, you know, Oh, well, you got to call me by, you know, this, or I'm Dr. So-and-so, or I am, you know, this is who I am. And if you don't include me, then it's going to be a fight. Why don't we look beyond that and know that we are included by default because we are human beings first. We are human beings first, and we are black beloveds, and we are to love and to support one another, full stop. Period. Period. Yeah, Pammy, is barbarianism a culture? Asking for a friend. <laughs> it is today. <laughs> Fight me, anybody. Hey, Elaine, good to see you. Glad you could join. Glad you could join. So, yeah, so Ubuntu, absolutely. Absolutely. So I had to check myself and, and my, my heterosexual privilege because privilege is about uh, when you then uh, think you are better than a, another group and you think that you have advantages and, and sometimes you do, but you live it out, which then in turn causes harm to the underserved or those who aren't privileged in the economic realm or who aren't privileged in uh, the educational realm or privileged in having access to healthcare and those who have privilege are not sharing with others or leading others or making sure that everyone um, equally has access or equitably has access, that is privilege. So I had to check my my uh, heterosexual privilege at the door. Just that quick second, it I was able to check myself and say, nah, <laughs> it don't matter to me because we're beloveds. And if I truly believe in this, then I have no problem. I see myself in you and you and me. That's like when we say namaste. It's the divine in me that sees the divine in you. So why would it matter if you put woman first, or queer, or femmes, or non-gender conforming, or they? We are all community, black beloveds. We are community. And we have an opportunity to come together to fight against the status quo, to fight against the systemic ills, to get people out of office who are in Florida, Tennessee, Texas, Missouri, te yeah, Missouri, and other places. We have an opportunity to make the change. Um, we have a huge election coming up in 2024, and that's not the only way that we can fight this fight because the system is still designed by white people and it wasn't designed for us and to work to our advantage. So there are other ways that we can fight. We got this and we need to collectively use it and use our power. I remember when, um, you know, we, we keep talking about gun control and a friend of mine was joking about every black person should buy a gun. Not an AR-15. Those weapons need to be off the street. So if you want to talk about the right to bear arms, every black person buy a gun. I bet you the NRA and all these white folk will definitely change their stance on their position with the NRA. I can almost guarantee it. They are scared as shit. <laughs> but it was a joke. I, I don't want to, you know not convincing anybody to do anything or not to do anything that's that's on you but it's facts it is facts javon is in the building i love you beloved the reverend javon 
Yes, facts. So with that, uh, my black beloveds, what are black beloveds? My black community that I love beyond measure. Be loved. You can twist it and turn it and, and, and describe it in so many beautiful ways. And I, that's one of my favorite, favorite words. And I don't use it lightly. Not everyone is a beloved in my world. But you are. You are loved. You are seen. I see you. I love you. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep building community of black beloveds. Mother Carolyn said, then they try to legislate that black people can't buy guns. Of course, of course, of course. People are in jail for marijuana. That's legal. Yeah, we, the list could go on and on. We could talk about this for hours. But it's something to think about. Think about your black beloveds, which is your community, which is what we build here at Tuesdays with Tawana, one episode at a time. I love you to the moon and beyond. Thank you for joining. Thank you for engaging. I love it when you engage in the comments. It just gets me so excited. Um, and uh, I hope to see you on next Tuesday. Inshallah. Later.